When I think of the Dallas Cowboys and I think of pressure, you know, we hear all these different mysterious stories about Jerry. Yeah. He need to step back. He need to do this. He need to just let him go play. <laughs> and then when you add the fan base in there, the, probably one of the greatest, craziest yeah. and greatest fan crazy, bases on the face it. of the earth. Yeah. So I understand why they call it America's team. Mm -hmm. Fred, but you missed delusional. No, 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 no. I did. I did. I did. Oh, see, I don't did. Do that to me, man. I did. Not, not on not on your show. Not it's, the it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's I mean because we're fan base don't think they Look, don't this is what show. I know. The the Cowboys fans. The Cowboys. The Cowboys fans <laughs> and the University of Miami fans are the same people. Every year they go you're, win. You're stuck in the 90s and the early 2000s. <laughs> Absolutely. Get been away up. from that. Hey, the last, the, quarter, same people. the last quarter century does not compute. So this to, is what we so call Dallas Cowboys No, but I'm fans. talking about pressure. Let me get back to my point. <laughs> Gang so up on more. Where, where do you feel nah, the nah. most pressure from performing for the fan base? Who's yeah. going to be everywhere to support you guys? Yeah. Or the front office? Because Jerry don't play. It's the front office. Um, the fans going, you go... You run for 190 and three touchdowns, Fred the greatest. You fumble twice, we need a new running back. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the the fan, we, you know that's they a rollercoaster. They ride the wave. Right, they're mm -hmm. going to ride the wave. It the, seems like Jerry riding the wave, too, with his recent comments Jerry about know, Cooper and Dak. Jerry know what he's doing, man. Like, what, Jerry, what, Jerry what's going doing. on? Jerry know what he's doing. Finish your point. I'm, I it, just... it is, the pressure from the front office is this. You get pulled in the office. We, we, we paid you this amount of money. We want you to do this job this way. If you don't, we got to figure out what we're going to do. Because wow. again, $8 million to Jerry ain't nothing. Right. I see you to Detroit. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, that's not something that I'm worried about, right? You and your, you and your bag, like, man, I'm, I'm good. No, that ain't. Because ultimately when we get up there, whether we want to admit it or not, we want to have success. Mm -hmm. Okay, how much money we get. If you doing it and you devoting that much time, you want to have success For sure. at doing it. So that that type of pressure is different conversations with the owner of a team when you then been drafted first round, mm -hmm. and they pay you a certain amount of money. Channing, you gonna have a different conversation as a third rounder with your owner, yeah. Than I'm gonna have as a twentieth overall pick. Mm -hmm. So that that's the pressure I'm talking about. Right. And well, what's the better way? Like this, I, I'll say it in Miami. Cause I'm, I'm yeah. Miami based. Yeah. Stephen Ross doesn't mess with the team. He yeah. hires people to mess with the team. Jerry Jones is there every day. Every day. And I, every day, and I, walking around the locker room. He know y'all like. And I think he too intrusive. Mm. I'm so, on record saying it. Yeah. Too intrusive, because I don't even know if Jerry realized the pressure he puts on his players, mm -hmm. and the guys that play for that team just by his presence being there every day. And you the GM. Right. Right. That, that, like, that's weird. It's so weird. I've I was. I, I went my last year and played in Baltimore. I saw Steve Bashotti twice. Saw him two times. And it was welcomed. And you could feel a different aura around the program. The building was football. And it was us. You think about it, bro. Like, we all sitting in a room at 15. Mm -hmm. If your mama walk in, the culture changes. Yeah, Conversation exactly. changes. Especially when she controlling the environment. Now it's different if a, like a assistant or a secretary walk in, you'd be like, don't tell my mama nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, but, so but, but when she walk in, mm -hmm. it's like, all right, we gotta straighten up. Cause you got the power to get me out of here and it won't bother you. Right. <laughs> I, I I just I, I've always thought that dynamic is is, is it, not good. I think it's detrimental to the Cowboys because I would not want the owner, the GM, I believe it is. to be looking at me every day, talking to me every day, yeah. evaluating me every day. When I'm sitting there in the steam room, I don't want the I, owner I, to look at me. I, I think the difference is you look at it differently because the GM is the owner. Is the owner. Right? So the GM in Pittsburgh was Kevin Colbert. I did see Kevin Colbert every mm -hmm. day, but Kevin Colbert didn't write the checks. Yep. Right, he, he he decided and he was in on the meetings on who played and who made the team, but he wasn't the guy ultimately that cut the checks. And I think yeah. that's what makes Jerry's aura different, right? I can go have a conversation with Kevin Colbert that wasn't an owner to player conversation. It was a conversation about what was best for the team and he didn't have his money invested in it. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? So you look at it differently because as a GM looks at, at players that he can move around a chessboard in order to win a championship, we are still a commodity 
So you're either an asset or a liability to yeah. that man. But also the point, what you just said, RC, if you work in, there in connection with a general manager, right, his success is directly tied to yours. For sure. Mm -hmm. Jerry's ain't. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be the owner whether you I cut you or not. Right. I'm gonna still have these deals, this stadium, I'm gonna still have this. So I've always thought it was detrimental because the thing that I've learned is when you in business or you have ownership of something, there are times when you gotta detach emotion from the decisions you're making. But if I paid $150 million for a franchise mm -hmm. and it's worth three or four, five billion dollars now, I'm emotionally attached. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm gonna make decisions <laughs> based on football. It's an emotional decision. It's an emotional decision that time. So I think that's the part where it gets cloudy. The one thing I've always said, man, Jerry wanna win. Like I believe he wants to win. That's his life. His life is take risk and win, right? And this, it's a respect to be had there. I respect them for that. But I do think when you own a team and you are a general manager, you emotional. Now, he'll deny it, but he don't even notice it. 